Welcome to science class. Two middle-aged <laughs> nerds. Doing science. Hi everybody. So our big question here is trying to understand what causes damage. And we learned that kinetic energy makes peak force. Peak force causes damage. So the question we're trying to answer today is what increases kinetic energy the most? Doubling the speed or doubling the mass of a cart? So that's what we're going to try to work out today. So you're going to look for this data table. If you can't find it, you're going to need to draw it. Um, but let's look for it. It's F20. It um, has a couple pieces of data in it already, which you can use, or you can use the data that we generate in this video. It's up to you. Don't worry about the bottom right now. Um, again, use your data or use the data from the video in this data table. And then you'll notice it could be white or yellow. So do your best to find it or draw it before you start. So the way we're gonna test this, right, is we're going to launch a car and it's gonna give, give it a certain speed. It's gonna travel along and it's gonna smash into some object, in this case, a cracker. And we're gonna judge how much the cracker gets damaged. So the first thing we have to figure out is um, how fast this car is going without any weight in it. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna launch it and we're gonna time how long it takes to get from where it starts to where it ends. So 0.6. Wow. A lot, a lot of things five. going on here. Yeah. Okay. 0.56. That one again. Yep. 0.63. Point six nine. Yep. Okay, we're on. Okay, so nice writing stuff. <laughs> so we had the we had a couple of trials which were all around point six. We had a point six three. I think we had a point six nine and a point six eight. So now we are going to average those. The way we get an average is we add up the three uh, times that we had. So point six three plus. Uh, 0.69 plus 0.68, and we equal that together. It turns out to be 2. Now we're going to divide that by 3, and we get 0.67. So that is our average time it took to travel that distance. Now we're going to use our speed formula, which is distance divided by time. And so we have to remember that the length of the track was 68 centimeters, 32, or 100 minus 32. So we put that on the top, that's our distance, 68 centimeters. And then we're gonna put underneath that the average time, which we established was 0.67 seconds. And we're gonna divide that thing out. So it's gonna be 68 divided by 0.67 gives us a speed of 101.49, which we'll go ahead and just round down to 101 centimeters per second. All right, we got our data here. We're gonna now transfer this it over to our This is where you need table. page F20. All right, we got our data here. We're gonna now transfer it over to our data table. Mass of the car was 60, what, 64 grams. 64 grams. Length of the track. 68 centimeters. And then time to reach the end, we thought on average was something like 0.67 seconds. Nice use of units there. Yep. Nice. And then we did this little calculation. So we'll write down the speed of 101 centimeters per second here. So we're adding mass to the cart with washers and sticky putty and so forth to double the mass of the cart. So I think we did that already. Let's take a look. Let's weigh that thing. So that's about double yep. 64. So our next step is to take the weighted car and launch it with the spring scale by the pullback of seven newtons and see what happens. Let's watch. All right, so now I'm gonna pull this back to seven newtons. What do we get? 0.65. 0.65. 
Let's do this again. Here we're launching the double mass car at a seven Newton pullback, and the time is 0 0.06 seconds. Three, two, one, 0.57. Ooh, nice. Okay. Three, two, one, 0.56. Now in this paper, which you don't have to write on, but we're gonna not bother writing down all those trials. We're just gonna sort of mentally look at it and figure out that the average is going to be somewhere between 0.56 and 0.6 seconds. So we'll just use that number, 0.6 seconds. And then we're going to use our distance over time formula. We'll remember the distance of the track is 68 centimeters. We'll divide it by our average time of 0.6 seconds. 68 divided by 0.6 is equal to 113 um, centimeters. centimeters per second. So is it about the same speed as the previous thing? This is 100, this is 113. You can decide whether you think yes or no. I'm, you know, within 100, with our error and all that, I'm saying yes to this question, because it's about the same speed. Agreed. All right, now we're gonna do this. Add these data to page F20. So we're gonna use our data. You can write our data down or use your own if you have some. The cart was 128 grams. The distance of the track was the same, 68 centimeters. Our time we're using is 0.6 seconds, so you can write 0.6 seconds down. Again, you can use your data or use ours as you see fit. Then we're going to put our speed down, which is distance divided by time. Yeah, this time, so we, got, we ended up with 113 centimeters per second. Nice. We've established it's about the same speed, so now we're going to smash a double mass car into a cracker and see how much the kinetic energy of this collision will do to the cracker in terms of damage. We'll get a sense of peak force and kinetic energy doing this. Let's see what happens. In slow motion. So we've established that the double mass car goes about the same speed, and now we're gonna take that double mass car and smash it into the cracker. Let's watch. See the damage there? There's a little bit of cracker messed up here, but not. Not too much damage. So now we'll take that cracker off to the side for our comparison with the next condition. All right, we're gonna throw a new piece of paper on there. We're gonna do this again for the last step, which is condition C, doubling the speed. We're gonna remove all the weights, which we did. Confirm that it's the original mass. Right, so here we go, it's back at 64, or 63.7, we'll round up to 64. Now we're gonna hold the cart. I think, actually we're gonna time this one. We're gonna hold the cart against the spring scale, register 10 newtons we're gonna, first. We're gonna do a time first with this guy. All right. At 10 newtons. At 10 newtons. Now do you wanna film and I'll there release? We yep. we're... Good. Everybody's okay. <laughs> it's ten. Okay. Three, two, one. Oof. Point three seven. Whoa. Three, two. Oh. Wow. Look at that. So much force with this whole thing comes lifting off. Clear tape. Two, one. Point three, one. Great. Three, two, one. Point two, eight. Nice. All right. Okay. So what do we get? We got point three, three, two, point three, one, or something like that, and point two, two eight. eight. Yep. So that's going to round about point three. And. Now we're going to calculate the speed. It's still 68, but it's divided by 0.3 this time. So it's 68 divided, oops, 68 divided by 0.3. We're not always good at math either. <laughs> and it's 
roughly 227, 227 centimeters per second. Oh, and we had 113 before. Is that, a, yeah, look at that. And is it about double speed of the previous cart? Yes. Absolutely, look at that. You compare it to this number, we got 113. So here we got 227, now we're good. If no, stop here and check in with your teacher, or if yes, move on, we're done. Okay. Good to go. All right, now we're going to add the numbers we got for our doubling the speed trial in condition C. And we're going back to our original mass yep. of 64 grams. Yep. Length of our track is still the same, it's 68 centimeters. Except this time our speed was almost double. What we came up with was point here three. Yep, point three seconds. Point three seconds. And so then we calculated that out with our formula, distance over time, and we got two hundred and twenty-seven centimeters per second. All right, so we've established that. Um, the car with the original mass is going 2x the speed, so now we're going to test the damage by putting a cracker up there, and we're going to run this car at 2x speed. Let's see what happens. Again, this was original mass and double speed it created this much damage, and so we'll look, we'll take that down carefully, and we'll put it next to the other one to compare. Farrell, what do we see? Yep, so we got our 2x mass. We can see not a lot of damage done to that cracker right there, just a little bit. And our two times speed clearly smashed that cracker <laughs> up good. So now we have sort of rough evidence, a cracker getting damaged, that will help us answer this question. Um, how much does doubling speed or mass affect the kinetic energy of an object and the resulting damage it can do in a collision? So think about that and be ready to offer an answer. Thanks.